Okay, you guys, saying goodbye to the lazy hummingbird. I loved it here. We had a blast. I'm gonna miss this place. Thank you, California. scariest thing just happened we were in a super bad accident like rollover accident with the trailer super scared but i think that we're gonna be okay okay so uh, is anything on you hurting yeah no no okay i'll have you sit down right here okay. okay do you like that guy awesome. wow <laughs> okay so they are here to roll the trailer back over Sounds like they're gonna roll it this way. It'll be an event, that's for sure. Bud, well, you okay? Good boy, bud, you're okay. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. Hey, you guys. Aaron, Dusty, and Max here. Welcome back to Eat, Move, Rest, and welcome back to Nebraska. Yes, we are finally home after a long, many weeks on the road. We had so much fun, and fortunately, praise God, we made it home safe. <laughs> We're alive and in one piece. No bumps, scratches, or bruises. Nope. Happy holidays to us. It's gonna be extra merry this year. <laughs> yes, so if you guys follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, that kind of thing. Or if you saw the intro to last week's video, you know that we were in a very scary and life-threatening accident on our way home from California last week. So if you subscribe to our email newsletter, then you probably read the entire sequence of events at length. I wrote it out partially for my own memory, but if you didn't read the newsletter, then we're here to share with you not only what happened, but more importantly, what we have taken away from this. What seems to be such a horrible experience that yeah. actually came out to be quite the opposite. Yeah, you know, this is something that obviously could have not just changed our lives for the rest of our lives, but it could have obviously taken our lives. I mean, we are super fortunate to be alive. So I guess we'll briefly give a recount of the sequence of events yep. as we remember. Uh, for me, at least, it seemed like everything happened really slowly and it's yep. very vivid in my memory. Yeah. Um, Weirdly, for me, it's like the opposite. It seems like it happened in a flash for me. So, never before in my life would I ever think I would be behind <laughs> the wheel of an F-150 pulling a travel trailer or a camper, but I found myself in that situation, yes. oddly enough. So, Dusty got us all the way out to California and on the drive home, he did the first leg on the first day and we yep. had planned to go another day and then another day and we'd be home. <laughs> so second day rolled around and we actually had a deadline to meet for YouTube yep. and we knew this the entire time leading up to leaving California. So I had planned on doing a stretch of the drive just for maybe five hours and we were leaving our campsite in St. George, Utah, headed to Denver. Yep. So I had been driving about three and a half hours, and as soon as I got out on the open road, I mean, the desert is good. expansive and straight and narrow, like it's tough to get it wrong. Yeah. And I was doing great, I'm like, this is really actually kind of a good confidence booster, which is something that's always in the back of Dusty's mind. He knows, <laughs> he's like, this will be good for her, you know? Sure enough, it went a lot more smoothly than I thought it would, especially because we were on an open, flat, straight road in the middle of the vast desert in Utah. It was beautiful. Yep. And before I knew it, I felt just a slight bit tired, but nothing to take too seriously, simply because I am not a nap taker. Yeah. I'm extremely hyper alert and aware all the time. Yeah. I just have a difficult time relaxing, let alone falling <laughs> asleep. So it came as a complete shock when what happened actually happened. 
yeah, you know, Erin had mentioned once, she's like, man, I'm actually getting really tired. I feel like we should switch. And I'm like, totally. Again, we were like in the middle of nowhere. The next stop was about 20 miles away at that point, I think. And so that was our plan. Like just make it the next like 20 minutes mm -hmm. or so and we would switch. The town was actually called Fruta, yeah. which I was like <laughs> cracking up. I'm like, well, of course we have to switch in Fruta. <laughs> yeah, I felt like we were back in Costa Rica. And anyway, so the next thing we know, like I hear the rumble bars. I have my headphones in, I'm looking at my screen and I hear the rumble bars on the left side. I look up and we're off of the left side of the road. My eyes must have closed for just a matter of a second or two before I heard Dusty holler my name. So I heard Dusty holler my name, jolted awake, found that the left tire was in the dirt. I saw the dirt flying up. So I overcorrected and turned right back onto the interstate. Thankfully, yeah. there was nobody anywhere near in front or behind us. And I probably would have been able to correct it from there, except for the fact that we were pulling the camper. So yeah. it fishtailed pretty bad. So yeah. then I went left again. Then I took a hard right that actually turned us a complete 180, at which point we rolled down the ditch, actually flipped the vehicle and the camper. And we wound up with driver's side in the air. I was strapped into my seatbelt, just hanging there. But between then, during the rolling, that's when it really seemed to slow down to me. And all I can recall is that both of us were praying out loud to God to save us. I just remember like holding on, bracing myself and yelling. Yeah, like praying out loud. Um, you guys know that our faith matters to us and you know you can read more about that on our posts and stuff but it was it was one of those things that I feel like definitely God God was there and um, with to roll like that and to not have any aches or pains um, and seeing the pictures of the the way the roof was dented in just inches from Max's face um, but I and I vividly remember looking down to get him out I'm just not sure how like I was even able to do that. Like I seriously feel like there were guardian angels with us that day um, and we're so thankful. After we stopped rolling and we were on our side there, um, I lean over and I quickly ask Dusty if he's okay and he says yeah and he reaches back for Max who is now awake and crying and I said is Max okay and he said yeah. And he told me, just get out of the truck, unbuckle, get out of the truck. So I had to climb out the sunroof. And then he very easily grabbed Max out of his car seat, thankfully. Nothing had gone wrong there, so he handed Max to me. And then he climbed out, and last was Bo. We were so relieved to know that even Bo climbed forward from the back seat, and we were able to eventually coax him out. He was a little cautious at first, yeah. um, a little apprehensive, but... Some people actually stopped on the side of the road and brought dog treats and we were able to get him out as well. Yeah, the main thing with getting Bo out was that you kind of had to like, he had to jump over to get through the sunroof. So it was tricky. I actually ended up having to carry him out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, before um, I got out, the truck was still running. Um, so I had to like back bend to get the keys out of the truck. I put the keys in my pocket for some reason like I was going to drive away later I'm not sure um, and yeah again that all happened to me in like seconds um, mm -hmm. we all were out super fast um, because you know my fear was that there would be some sort of explosion or fire or something like that um, there were two people that like were, were even close to us one was uh, probably half a mile behind us another person was probably about a half a mile in front of us that saw the wreck in their mirror and reversed clear down the interstate to to come and help us so so thankful to those people that mm -hmm. that did and so thankful like Aaron said before that there were there was no one around us um, because again you know we saw signs that said you know drowsy driving uh, you know, it's something like pull over if you're tired, like all of these warning signs and we Which is exactly what we had planned to do. It would have been maybe 25 minutes yeah. and there we would have been. Yeah. And it's just crazy how quickly life can change in an instant. Yeah. So it was just bizarre to me once we climbed out of the roof and we were all standing there and I, I just couldn't help but continue to look over Max and Dusty and myself and Bo trying to look for any bump or scrape or bruise. But honestly, the only discomfort I was feeling was the amount of dirt, grime, just like across my face, in my hair, and grit in my teeth. But that was honestly it. Yeah. So yeah, I had glass and stuff like in my ears that I didn't find later when we got to the hotel. We were like wondering why we looked so tan. It's because we were like covered in dirt. And I spent probably three hours, you know, while 
Aaron and Max were in the ambulance, rifling through the wreckage, picking out clothes and whatever I could salvage. So the ambulance checked us over. There weren't any injuries. Everything checked out completely fine, which we were very thankful for. Um, then the wrecker came and they let us know that it would probably be several hours for them to pick up everything and it had gotten dark by that point so they advised us to find a hotel in Grand Junction, it was the next biggest city, and then be able to sort through everything that we could salvage in the morning. So that's what we did. So the most important thing is that we were not injured and thankfully no one else was involved in this accident either. We're very aware that things could have been much, much worse Again, we take it very seriously. If I would have known that it had gotten to that point, I definitely wouldn't have been driving, even before then when we had left. If I felt uncomfortable as we had gotten started, I'm the dramatic one, I would have let Dusty know that, eh, I don't think I should do this. So like we said, if we had foreseen any of this, we definitely would have prevented it. We're very, very cautious, worry wart type A people, but accidents do happen and we've had an overwhelming overwhelming positive response from so many people not only just encouraging us um, to recover well not just physically but emotionally that was the main thing for me sitting in the ambulance was feeling like okay i'm physically okay we're all fine in that regard but emotionally what kind of battle am i facing here how am i going to get through this is there going to be ptsd am i going to have night terrors it really really was just an unsettling feeling um, the next morning we shared a post on social media basically to round up as many prayers and positive vibes as possible. I think it helps to know that we were being showered with an outpouring of blessings from all of you guys. It was just a comforting reassurance. We heard from so many of you that you had experienced similar things. In fact, our own family members had very similar stories to ours. Yeah, both of our grandparents said that they've had very similar accidents. Aaron's grandpa, same thing, was, was driving and dozed off and rolled the camper. And again, you know, like we understand how bad this is and how bad it could have been and how scary. Um, and we're so fortunate to be here and thankful, like Aaron said, that no one else was involved. Um, so like we're definitely feeling the weight of this, but have, again, like Aaron said, have had really good conversations with people that have said, um, just thank God, you know, this is more of a blessing that we are alive and want to somehow be able to talk to other people about, um, you know, not feeling that guilt and that shame and stuff like that. And we're still working on it, obviously. Yeah. You know, we both just, would have felt like so bad if something, you know, heaven forbid, would have been wrong with just Max or even just Bo, you know. Yeah. So. And, and even, you know, we just want to make it clear to you guys that we want to be forward about our spirituality and our faith and also the ups and the downs of our lives. That's why we're here. Being on social media is a choice. We don't have to expose our personal lives, but we've already chosen to do that. Yeah. So we're like, you know, we can't just share the highlights. We need to share the lowlights and what we're able to glean from those as well. So in my newsletter, I wrote a handful of takeaways, just short, brief, you know, this is how I feel now and this is what's positive that's come from this. So number one, I would just say, things can change in an instant, in the blink of an eye, yeah. literally. And you know, life is so fragile. We're such fragile beings, so much could have been worse, but at the same time, we are such resilient beings. So when I said I've had these fears of PTSD and night nightmares, um, I really learned just how resilient and how well our body, bodies, minds, emotions, spirits can adapt with the power of prayer and positivity and just being open and sharing things, I felt, I feel like has been such a great therapy in the process of healing from this. Yeah, for sure. So again, we, we have an addiction in the family. We've suffered all kinds of loss and, and heartbreak and all of these things. And it just comes down to like opening up and being vulnerable. And do we receive negative feedback? Yeah, all the time. And is it hard to hear when people don't agree with us or don't like something that we're doing? Yeah, it really sucks. Um, but we're not going to let it stop us because we know that like that being transparent and being vulnerable um, is the way to connect with people and to allow other people to do the same. So, you know, we're we're here and we're sharing our message and we don't necessarily have like a plan necessarily for this video. We just wanted to like talk about it and be open and upfront and and just again be share some gratitude, like be thankful that we're safe and alive and and uh, yeah.
just felt timely to take this opportunity to sit down right before the holidays and just tell you guys how we've been feeling and this just how grateful we are to be alive mm -hmm. how much more meaningful our family unit is as small as we are <laughs> we're just really thankful to have been spared and like i said this has been somewhat of a rebirth like we've been buying essentials like the things that we lost like bed sheets and pillows and things that we lost in the camper we're like probably just gonna like wrap up as christmas gifts because we're like we don't even need like that much more stuff this year we just need to recover the essentials that we lost and like celebrate our lives and celebrate the just having the essentials this year for christmas and so i don't know i feel like it's a wake-up call from god um but the in stuff pales in comparison it means nothing all that really matters is our lives and our relationships and how we use our lives to make the world a better place to lead people to god yeah and that's what we're trying to do here aside from just eating healthy foods and working out yeah. you know we really want you guys to know that we are spiritual beings having this human experience yeah you know that's what i posted on instagram it's like look this is about getting our soul in order. You know, like I could be worried about a new truck, obviously, which I am, like I'm going to need a vehicle and I'm gonna need these things for life. But like Aaron just said, like our souls live on forever. And um, it's the, our time on this earth is limited and it's a short ride and enjoy it, yes, but like find love and choose love and Man, it's hard for me even now, like just getting frustrated and getting angry about like stupid petty things every single day. And it's like, man, none of that stuff matters. Um, so I say, get your soul in order. Like I said on Instagram, get your soul in order and the rest will be taken care of. Like literally, um, we're, we're just taken care of, you know, and it's, we're so fortunate, so. And you know, when things like this happen and you do leave this world, it, the thought that keeps coming to my mind is, did I do what I needed to do to get myself to the other side, like to a, a better place? And I kind of feel like I've got a lot of work to do here on mm. this planet. And totally. there are a lot of regrets I've had for the way I've acted, the way I've treated Dusty and Max and even Bo sometimes, to be honest, you guys, like it's tough to be a good person. and. <laughs> It's one thing to do that in front of the camera, but when the cameras are off, like what kind of person are you being? And what kind of person are you being to yourself internally? That's something I've really, really struggled with and really worked hard on this past year. Yep. And I don't know that I've improved enough to the point where I can say that, yeah, I would have left this world in, in as good a condition as I could have mentally, physically, emotionally. I definitely feel like having, having given this second chance in a sense, I do really want to try to be a better wife, a better mother, a better daughter, better in all regards and just be there for others, be there for you guys. And I don't want to get sappy, but I just really feel like it's time to step my game up. Yeah, and I feel the same too. Like I feel like I'm falling so short in so many areas. And again, this isn't about guilt or resentment. And we know that we have a God who doesn't want us to feel those things. Um, but again, we're human and, and I'm, I'm using it as fuel to do better, to be better, and to get some good work done. Like we want to continue to put good vibes and good content and helpful information out there into the world. And we're just gonna have to continue. And so continue to uh, follow and support however you can, you know, share these videos, comment below, let us know what you guys want to learn or see from us. And we'll just continue doing that. Um, you know, trying to do our part to bring light into the world, I guess. And share your stories and your experiences as well. I mean, nothing has helped me more to process things than to just hear from you guys and be able to sympathize with each other. Mm -hmm. And especially in the age of COVID, it's just nothing feels better than being able to connect however possible, even if it means on the internet. For sure, we've been doing more coaching sessions than ever, so talking to chatting with people on zoom and facetime and all of these things like you know we're here we're here for that and um yeah we we love you guys we hope you have a blessed like holiday season uh we'll be back next week with with some fun recipes and stuff but yeah we just wanted to open up and share our journey and how we're feeling and we're not really sure how we're feeling it's still pretty fresh 
Um, I think we're all tired. Max is tired, I'm tired, um, but we're glad to be home. And, and it so sounds thankful. super cliche, but there is no place like home for the holidays. <laughs> And if you guys are not able to be close to loved ones, it's, travel is just a mess this year. A lot of people aren't able to see loved ones. We're here for you. Reach out to us and hopefully 2021, as unpredictable as life can be, we don't have any, any knowledge of whether it's going to be better or worse, but we're hoping for the best, praying for the best. So. Yep. You guys know the drill. In the meantime, you move rest your best. We'll see you next time. Thanks for following along. Bye guys. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.